It is the morning of day 24. We're here on Mistaston Lake. We had some pretty interesting uh, news that we got yesterday. Uh, we found out from someone back home that a plane had gone down on Mistaston Lake on July 15th, which is the day that we started this trip. And um, there were seven people in the plane. Three bodies have been recovered, but there's still four missing. And there's maybe still a search uh, and rescue crew on this lake. Crash happened three weeks ago, so we're thinking the likelihood of someone still being alive out here is slim, even after a plane crash. So um, yeah, we're gonna paddle on and we're gonna go check out the Eco Lodge at the end of the lake, which apparently has, um, or was apparently where the search and rescue crew was actually staying. So maybe they're still there or I don't know, it's been three weeks. Maybe the search has been called off. Who knows? It's the limited information that we've got out here, but just super eerie feeling around camp this morning. The sudden news of what was happening around us had our team lost for words. Not only was it the first time we thought about other people, these men were out searching for the same experiences as we were, which really made it hit home. It was a quiet morning as we tried to process the news in our own ways, with the very limited information that we had. All right, so we are out here on Mastaston Lake right now, paddling through the foggy weather that we're currently having, and Noah has hooked into something. Lake monster. Oh yeah. Wow. Wow. Just like football, dude. Great fish. We are currently on Mistaston Lakes Island, the big island right in the middle of Mistaston Lake. This lake was created by an impact crater many years ago, and the island was formed by a reactionary uh, effect after the impact crater would have hit. So if you think about like a rock when you drop it into water, and the water splooshes back up again in the middle, like that's essentially what has created this island in the middle of the lake. So. We paddled to it, it's super misty out today. We actually made it here using a compass bearing and uh, we just paddled for like an hour into like nothingness until finally we could just start to see the shore after like an hour and then uh, we're here. So we're gonna walk around, explore a little bit and see what she's all about. Never seen anything like this. This is a very special spot up here. It really is. A young Christopher wanders through the barren lands of Labrador, feeding mainly on blueberries and other small shrubs. This man is at home, peaceful in the barren lands, not much of a worry at all. As we paddled away from the island, we started to hear the pulse of a helicopter.
Out walked a man we would later know as Rich Martin. I think he was as shocked to see us as we were to see him. Rich explained he was part of the search party, but there is no new information, and they were heading back to the coast that afternoon. We said our goodbyes before we brought out a gift that was the best type of morale boost that we could have asked for. Yo, what did we just get? Beer in the middle of nowhere. A Our beer delivery. Oh my god. And Dave, you might have a pack of smokes waiting for you. Might, might just there, boy. The craziest thing. Doing down the lake and the bird comes over, she spins around, she lands right beside us. Can't believe it. Can't Holy believe it. Holy smokes. 24 days. How far are you walking before you crack one of those, Noah? 24 days and Rich falls out of the sky and gives us an eight pack beer. 24 days! my god, boys, what just happened? What just happened? The helicopter came down and an angel. Pass me one of those beers. An angel named Rich. Oh my god. Sir, you boys drink beer. <laughs> Do we drink beer? I've had one, I think, once. This was the first thing, first thing you said, pretty much. You boys drink beer, pretty much. No one will ever believe that story. We're in day 24 in the middle of where a helicopter drops, comes out of nowhere, gives us an eight pack of cold beer, and then takes off. That's what dreams are made of. That is what dreams are made of. On Mistaston Lake, after 10 days of rain, today's like our only sunny day, and we get an eight pack of beer. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Day 24, I don't, almost don't remember what beer tastes like. Rich landed this helicopter on the beach and gave us an eight pack of beer, which is just like crazy. Middle of nowhere, Miss Aston Lake, lands a helicopter and gives us beer and has also invited us to go check out their camp, which is just down the lake. And what's there potentially? There is apparently the potential that there is a flat of beer and some fresh fruit of, I don't even know if it's fresh, they have fruit there. It's gonna be potentially awesome. It's 100% gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. There's even beds that apparently we can use. Do you think that was a goodbye? I think so. Pretty filled with people. I think that was goodbye in helicopter talk. Yeah. It's been a while since I've spoken helicopter. Maybe this is bigger than I thought. What do you got on the line here? I'm not sure yet. I'm hoping a char. You can see her flashing over there. Just hammered right after that point.
Holy smokes. Oh Look my gosh. You have a little higher drive bags in your way. There you go. Holy smokes. Woo what a catch. Oh my god. We're gonna let her go. But I need a photo first. Alright, time to let her go. There she goes. There she goes. Nice. Oh man. That is so sick. It's a beauty. It couldn't have happened in a better spot. No, not at all. Oh man. All right, so we've just pulled up on the beach of this lodge that we were told we should come and pay a visit to. Look at this place. You can see there's a main cabin over there. And then just a bunch of like bunky style cabins off to the side. This one has panels, tons of wood. You can see they've rigged the place to bear proof it. I want to step on those. And the place was all uh, locked up. So Rich Martin, the pilot of that helicopter, had told us that the doors here were just shut by a nail and said to go in and grab some food and left us like a whole bin of leftovers, including a flat of beer. Flat of beer. So the boys have been crushing peanut butter and banana and jam sandwiches, just living up all this food that is left here right now. As you can see behind me, the weather is changing a little bit. And it looks like we might have a storm on our hands. We'll be happy to be inside tonight, inside this cabin. Tonight we party. Saturday night on the Nastastin. The boys are eating food. That's all I got. I was going with Yukon Blonde there, but I just totally ran out of lyrics. Yeah, no, it was awesome, man. So but it is our Saturday tonight. We, uh, this is our vacation from our vacation. What seems like unlimited beer and uh, a box of food that, are, that Rich the God helicopter pilot dropped off for us. We probably all crushed at least four or five peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And uh, there's more to crush. There's more to crush. More beer Apple pies. There's an apple pie. There's an apple pie. Who would have thought day 24, in the middle of nowhere, we'd be crushing apple pies and um, cold Coors Light. Not, Not me. Not me. Oh shit, two twenties? Close them up. Driving up north on the trans highway. We enjoyed the cabin's comforts and felt blessed with the bounty of food. Not as but we couldn't help but reflect on the circumstances that brought us here. Driving up north on the trans highway. We all felt a roller coaster of emotions. And at times like this, you Not really do sweet. feel humbled on how quickly things can change. Should I stay with you, I know Should I stay for more Should I stay with you, I know now This is the Mustastin skillet What we got here is potatoes 
and onion as the base. Then we chopped in black forest ham and barbecue smoked chicken. And on top of that, we add some seasoning, eggs, cheese, and then kind of steamed it with extra butter. I don't know if my arteries are ready for this. They never will be. <laughs> Gonna ruin this masterpiece. Oh boy, look at this. I don't know, I'm not sure that after 24 days of trip food, we're gonna really want to eat this. <laughs> I don't know. Looks suspicious to me if you don't rehydrate it first. Oh, man. Peanut butter, banana, Nesquik chocolate syrup. We spent the morning rotating around the frying pan, and each time getting more creative with our new ingredients. We all decided that today we would take a rest day, and use this time to recharge and catch up on our journals. There's day six, jamming lake, 41 kilometers. We're jamming. Cramped in the canoe, wet bottom equals swamp ass. We're crushing distance. So today we decided that we'd have a rest day and spending a lot of time in the cabin just literally just sitting there eating. But uh, we were getting a little cabin fever so we decided to go for a walk and see what, what's around. You can see behind us this is the village that we've had to ourselves. Actually really nice, it's well built and it's everything you'd really need for, um, for living really. But yeah, we decided uh, this might be a good opportunity to maybe climb a hill or two before we crack into the Coors Light and have some more food. Saturday night round two. <laughs> yeah, round two. got there? I think it's a wolf skull. Its teeth look really dulled out, but it looks like those are the fangs. Crazy. Do something cool. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think we're close enough? I don't know, man. We're like, like, should we just touch it? I feel like we go give it a quick touch. Just to say hi. <sighs> Alright, let's go. Welcome to Mont Mistaston. What do you got to say? Well, I just want to let you guys know that it's August and we're standing on a lot of snow right now. Tough to paddle in this, eh? Yeah. Should have brought our skis. Be a little treacherous actually trying to snowboard on today. Eh? Definitely. There's a human approaching us, crashing through the trees. Ahoy! Fancy meeting you boys up here. How's it going, man? Going pretty great. Did you climb any cool mountains? Yeah, I went over there. I climbed that one over there, that massive one. No way. Yeah. That's covered in fog. I just completed one of the hardest things I've ever done on this trip. So I'm going up that hill, and I hit like that fog line. See, see like that first hill? I hit that fog line. And I'm like, well, I can't really see anything beyond here. There's really no point in going up. But then I keep going up. And then it starts to flatten out. And there's these two small ridges on either side of me. And it descends into a little swamp. And something, there's a little arctic cotton grass was blown in there and something caught my eye in the swamp. And there's just a little, little tiny bit of salmon pinkish orange looking at me. And I thought it was that two-toned cotton grass. We have the white ones and we have that orange one. 
but it wasn't from something else. And in this little valley, it was filled no. with cloud berries. No. And I brought you guys back some because I know you've never tried no them before. Way. What? I gorged oh. myself and then realized that I had a plastic awesome. bag. Dude, I was totally wondering how this was going to relate back to food. Always <laughs> food. I know the most difficult things for you revolve around not being able to eat something or yep. having to wait to eat something. I'm generally a fair person, but when it comes to berries, Get I do not give up. Get your hands off my berries. Yeah, you, you gotta fight before them, but I felt guilty eating all those cloud berries. Or bake apple, as they call wow. them around here. They're those like really nothing good. else. Yeah. Those are really good. Thanks, man. No worries. We'll save a few for Dave. Yeah, definitely. I try some of that. I definitely will. Thank you very much. What does that taste like? Mm. Apple pie. There's definitely some apple in there. There's some apple, a little bit of raspberry. It's, Easy. it's, it's impossible to place. It's a special flavor. I gorge myself on them. Night, hey, boys. <laughs> you guys were all supposed to say good night, so it'd be a good ending clip. But I realized that if I was standing over here, you'd wonder why the hell I was standing on this side of the room. I look over at your bunk, like, what? Where is he? <laughs> well, why are you going to bed in the kitchen? <laughs> Yo, what day is it? That's a good question. Stay tuned. <clears throat> 26. 26, you're right. Today we're heading back on out to the river. We're gonna be hitting one of the most anticipated parts of the entire trip. The lower Mistassin River, very, very, very little information on it. And we're gonna slowly make our way to a 75 foot waterfall that we have to portage around. Yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to getting back out there. We're just cleaning up around the place, tidying up, trying to leave it better than we found it. We got a little coffee on the go, we did the dishes. I'm ready to get out of here. Hit the water. Don't think the bears are getting in now. Let's get back to our rugged lifestyle, boys. The Lower Mustassin River flows east towards the Labrador Sea, and like all rivers on this side of Labrador, it drops quickly in elevation as it pours off the Labrador Plateau. From looking at our maps, we can expect a lot of whitewater and waterfalls, with limited places to leave the river in case of an emergency. Once we were in, we were committed, and our plan was to proceed with an extra sense of caution. This river can make or break our entire trip. With these larger sets of rapids that we're hitting now, it's really important for us to be scouting them before we get ourselves into like a sticky situation. So we're just taking our time today. Ready, Cheech? Just take our time through this. After a few manageable sets of rapids, we started to hear the familiar rumble of white water in the distance. 
though this sound was much stronger and deeper than anything we've heard before. So we have just arrived at the big 75 foot waterfall on the, on the lower Mistaston River and holy smokes this thing looks so epic. So we made it to the top of the mountain next to the waterfall so we can scout what's below in the gorge. I wish that this filming would do justice to this, but I am betting any money it will not but we're gonna try for you, because you at least need to see that this place exists, and then hopefully, one day maybe you'll travel it as well. So we've loaded our boats with gear and we're just slowly lowering them down this very steep section. You have to be so careful in here. Start our final descent. All right. Wait, wait. I got it. It has to go in stages. Nice, boys. Coming to you live from the bottom of the waterfall. The water is crazy turbulent in here, creating massive, like, swelling wakes. We've been kind of coming over the edge of the boat now and then. Yo, what do you think? A little terrified, to be honest. Yeah, it's pretty crazy in here. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Yeah, let's go. drops off to the abyss. No. Yeah. <laughs> While checking depths of this gorge, Noah has hooked into a fish. I was trying to count like every reel was a foot. Yeah. Seems like she has some weight. I 
did not want to deal with the fish. <laughs> it's a nice fish, but... You caught it in the gorge, too. It's kind of cool. Your fly rod's off the back right now, it's fine, but we're going towards the wall. We're going to hit a decent set of rapids here. Yeah. Maybe we should pack up. Four of these, you just paint the braided part of your pants. So after an amazing day on the river, we find ourselves once again in a spruce swamp. Our favorite place to camp. Making it work. As the boys do. Noah, what do you got for dinner tonight? Uh, kind of a take on a burrito. We have pulled pork and beans that we rehydrated. And then I also have extra quesadillas from a past lunch. So I'm putting the quesadilla on the bottom. Then you put your, your mixings on the top. And then on top of that, you add a little cheese. And it's kind of like a, uh, like a backcountry burrito, you can call it. Effort. Oh man. 100%. So one of the key repairs we've had to do over here is fixing our dry pants. So Dave's got a hole in his right now, and Chris is going to repair it up with some aqua seal. That's all it is. Do you just do it to one side? Yep, generally just the outside because um, that's where the water's coming from and like with these tears, these pants are a little older. So these are more abrasion holes than anything else. And by sealing around the abrasion, extending beyond where the actual hole is, you're actually protecting the rest of the surface that's weakened. And then when you get little pinholes like this, it's the same, same process. You just cover up around them as much as you can. These small leaks are hard to pinpoint and they really they let a surprising amount of water in more than you would think. That should do us for now. And this just uh, dries overnight. AquaSeal has a accelerator. So it's a separate little chemical you can bring to daub on top that will have a cure in two hours if you really need it, but oh, that's cool. if you're just smart of when you do it and do it at the end of the day, you don't even notice that it takes overnight and it'll be done and ready to go. Awesome, man. Chris, the repair guy. <laughs>